Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Southeastern. My name is Lou Lopes and I am the superintendent of Southeastern Regional Vocational Technical School District. And I have the honor to serve today as the Master of Ceremonies. We are joined this morning by dedicated members of our school committee who, who put many, in many hours without any compensation for the sole purpose of supporting our kids. From Brockton, Mark Lindy, and Wayne McAllister. From East Bridgewater, Joe Dutcher. From Easton, Mike Kuchowski. Foxborough, Steve Newton. From Norton, Dennis Feely. Unable to join us from Sharon, Mindy Kempner. From Stoughton, Roberta Harback. And from West Bridgewater, our new elected chair, Colleen Maloney. So, so was that? And oh, and Bill Flannery from Mansfield. <laughs> there we go. So with that, I'd like to begin by introducing the chair of our building committee from East Bridgewater, Joe Dutcher. Thank you so very much for coming today, and welcome everyone. This is indeed a wonderful time to be associated with Southeastern Regional. And I was privileged to be the chairman of the addition and uh, renovation uh, subcommittee. It's been two years since the groundbreaking and we now have a new gym and a beautifully renovated school. But it really started before November of 2011. And I would like to thank the firms that put it all together. Our collaborative partners, our architectural firm, DRA, who designed and redesigned the plans. The MSBA, the Massachusetts School Building Authority, that provided 80% funding for the project. A wonderful thing. And this was this was all done and in place before we picked our construction crew of W.T. Rich, who would take up a whole row here. And uh, we thank you all for doing such a marvelous job. The new gym was a starting point, and that was, we had a groundbreaking for that a year ago, and then we could attack the rest of the school. The uh, old gym was turned into the media center. As you walk through, you'll see there, there's 60 computer, desktop computers uh, for the student use. We have technology throughout the school. And then the old, the smaller gym was turned into the media drama center. And then we attacked room by room. There was construction mornings every week with collaborative partners, architects, and the foreman from, the, from WT Rich uh, there. I was privy to be at these meetings, and they were extraordinary. We would walk through the school after these meetings to check the progress weekly. And the MSBA was always kept abreast of everything that was being done. We also needed other partners in order to get this project to go. Because building an in-session school is challenging, to say the least. And we had our partners. We had the best students and staff who contributed just with such great cooperation between the construction crews and themselves. And that brings us to today's celebration. As I said, it's a great time to be at the... Uh, at Southeastern. Our MCAS scores had the greatest gain in percentage across the state. We have a student, Adrian Niles, you'll see him on the video. He invented us, he didn't invent it, he built a Segway from scratch. We have a junior, Emily McDonald, who was able to uh, enter a popular science contest and win top prize. She won the grand prize of $1,000 and an article about her in the Delta Faucet website. The project was to dream up and experiment to save the planet. And Emily did a study comparing tap water with bottled water and proved that bottled water is a thousand times more expensive in many ways and, and yet no better than ordinary tap water. The school committee would really like to give everyone a segue, but <laughs> we are going to give everyone a water bottle. And as you see throughout the school, there's a uh, bubbler over there, right next to it is a water station. You put the, put your bottle in, push a button, and fills it up, and you walk away with healthy tap water. Again, welcome everyone, and thank you for being here today. Thanks, Joe. Spend five minutes with Joe, and you'll quickly discover 
his passion for the school. In fact, for the last two years, as you mentioned, he has participated in over 100 construction meetings. Thank you. <laughs> this year's open house theme is community. In Southeast, there's about nine communities coming together to support career and technical education and economic development. I would be remiss if I did not take a moment to recognize some of the local officials who are joining us this morning. It was through their help that we received unanimous support and approval for this project. I know we have Representative Jay Barrows is here. <laughs> and also Sean O'Connell. We also have several local officials. Dennis Dinopoli from Brockton City Council is here. Um, Jay Stewart is so I'm walking here. Um, Alan Krajek, the Eastern Police Chief, and uh, Kevin Patridge. They were here all the time making sure that uh, the facility was, was in order, and I want to thank you and, and, and your staff for a great, great uh, assistance. Also, we have Nancy Maloney from West Bridgewater Board of Select Ministry. I also want to recognize uh, a couple individual special guests. We have with us George Allen, who's a member of the first school committee over 45 years ago. And we also have Paul O'Leary with the second superintendent, Paul standing in the back here. I know I probably forgot somebody, and I apologize for that. Um, another key to building community is strong partnerships. When Mike Petrowski joined the school committee, he immediately made one of his priorities creating bridges of opportunities between Southeastern and Stonehill College, less than two miles away. And because of his persistence, today we enjoy a great symbiotic relationship. When he took office this past July, Father John Denning became Stonehill's 10th president. From 2007 to 2013, Father Denning guided Stonehill Student Affairs Division, collaborating with others on campus to ensure that a culture of learning permeates all areas of college life. Prior to his arrival at Stonehill, Father Denning served as campus minister at Bridgewater State University, teacher, coach, and chaplain at Quill Cassidy, and Vocations Director for the Congregation of Holy Cross. It's fitting that he joins us this morning. If you read his bio, you will see that he spent his life not only doing something he loves to do, but doing the job that he was born to do. That's the definition of vocation. And it's what it means to work, to be a student, and to graduate from a vocational school. Ladies and gentlemen, Stonehill President Father John Denning. Thank you, Superintendent Lopes. It's quite a kind introduction. It's truly an honor for me to be here today to join with the Southeastern Vocational Technical High School community to celebrate the dedication of this remodeled school and to continue to build partnerships with this vibrant community of learning, which is Southeastern Regional Vocational Tech. So let us just take a quiet moment and ask the source of all wisdom to bless this building, its students, faculty, staff, parents, and family. Good and gracious God, we pray you send your blessing upon us, and especially upon those who walk the corridors of this newly renovated building. May the work and study that happens in its labs, classrooms, library, and the broader community help to form an academic community that fosters active and engaged citizens who strive to build a stronger and more vibrant society. May this building further the learning and development that happens in the lives of the students of Southeastern Regional Vocational Tech so that they live lives of both personal happiness and professional fulfillment. And we make this prayer in God's holy name, amen. amen. Over two years ago, many of us got together for the groundbreaking ceremony. I can honestly say that I'm enjoying the ribbon cutting a lot better. Maybe I'll finally get some rest. And uh, so, so we prepared a little video just to talk about and for you to see some of the renovations and, and what is going on in the school. So I'll see if I can get this to work.
The new facility really has allowed us to provide a 21st century education. Everything has changed. The, the school culture is uh, so positive, so exciting. You look at the new science wing, uh, you know, the science labs that are in there, you look at the, the health and medical wing, the dental area, every single vocational program uh, was improved upon. We were able to complete the project ahead of schedule and uh, it just enhances the school so much. The experience was great. I was a little nervous as, as the school principal when they you know, ripped out the ceiling tiles and everything was exposed for two years. We didn't have one problem with the students. In fact, they learned. They were able to watch and learn from the process, which I think was great. In fact, many of them were involved in the process. There's actual students here who are in the shops who are working on the building, seeing, you know, like, this is what we do. And actually working to build this place, it's like, here we are learning our career and putting it into action. It was a long time when we were in the middle of construction. Now that it is just about done, people are excited to come to school every day. It's like a free environment, everyone's like nice to each other, everyone knows each other basically. The remodeling in particular has been a great thing for the performing arts uh, department. We're a new program, we're just starting to be developed over the, the last couple of years and now that we've actually start to have our shop uh, set up and in place like the other shops have, um, it's, it's been a great attitude boost for the kids. Oh, I love it. Our, our shop was, it was okay before, but now that we have it redone, it's a lot more organized and we can do more things with it. And you can actually start hearing what you're doing. It's given the school like an identity that we need and it's given the vocational program space to do what they need to do. It was a challenge for a couple of years to work through it. Uh, we didn't shut down to rebuild. We had to work around that construction. Um, but in the end, it's left us with a, a really a fresh feeling. And uh, you can tell by the incoming freshman class that they're really excited about seeing new science labs, uh, new technology with items like Chromebooks and smart boards in every classroom. Part of the education that we're giving them here is how to use technology properly. And by having computers in the classroom and by showing them the different ways that they can use technology, we're giving them the skills that they're going to need to succeed. Since the construction, it's like a whole new school. It's like, you know, freshman, sophomore year, I went to one school, and then junior, senior year, I mean, the entire outlook has changed. Wasn't that great? Before we introduce our next key speaker, I just want to take one more minute to brag a little bit about the school. Sometimes the best news releases are the ones that don't come from you. On September 20th, you can't read that, but on September 20th, the commissioner released the 2013 MCAS scores, and Southeast was recognized as the high school among the biggest combined gains in ELA and mathematics and the entire staff and student body should be proud of that accomplishment. We did that during construction. Great job. <laughs> to introduce our first keynote speaker, we have, we, I'm gonna introduce a freshman from Brockton, Ta Taryn Scanlon. Our first guest is a great supporter of Southeastern and career and technical education. Mr. Joseph Kennedy holds a bachelor's degree in both management science and engineering from Stanford University. He joins us from the U.S. House of Representatives, where he is the congressman for the 4th District of Massachusetts. He works through his position in the federal government in a variety of ways to deal with educational issues, and among these, one very important issue, finding a solution to reduce the burden of loan costs upon graduation. He's a strong supporter of public education who works to ensure the skills we are taught will meet the needs of employers and create strong pathways to jobs in the 21st century. Congressman Kennedy has also worked for Harvard's Legal Aid Bureau, providing legal services to low-income families. He also co-founded an after-school program for at-risk youth in the, great, in the Boston area. He served in the Peace Corps, worked for the United Nations as an international development analyst, and served as an anti-poverty consultant overseas. His experience serves us well. 
Recently, his office has established a youth cabinet for the 4th Congressional District of Massachusetts. Two students from each high school in the district have been nominated by their schools to, to participate in the youth cabinet, which will advise Congressman Kennedy on issues affecting young people, their families, and their communities. I am proud to say that I am one of Southeastern's nominees and I'm looking forward to the meetings. I'd like to introduce to you Congressman Joseph Kennedy. Thank you so much for the extraordinary introduction, and um, we are thrilled to have you as part of the Youth Cabinet, and certainly look forward to, uh, to the meetings as well. We've had the, uh, one already that was um, really extraordinary, and so looking forward to, uh, to having you as part of it. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it is an absolute honor for me to be here this morning. I, um, I, was, I grew up in a political family. My grandmother always said, never stand between an audience and cake, so I will be, I will be very brief. Um, <coughs> But I, uh, I did want to just uh, say a couple of, uh, of most importantly, um, words of thanks and recognition, and then um, just let you know how, why I'm so excited to be here today. But first, to Principal Wheeler and Superintendent Lopes and the elected officials uh, that are here today, some state delegation, local delegations, um, this coordination of projects like this don't happen on their own and don't happen overnight. And it is through uh, some extraordinary hard work over a long period of time that you're able to uh, serve your community in the way that uh, this uh, investment represents. And so um, I just want to say thank you for the example that you set uh, for the rest of us um, all across the country about how government can and should uh, support the local community. So thank you all very, very much. Appreciate that. Um, I'm extremely excited to be here for a couple of reasons. Obviously, a $32 million grant investment in uh, vocational school is an extraordinary commitment and is going to provide students with the tools and the uh, resources that they need in order to get, uh, as the video said, the skills uh, to meet the workforce requirements today, but also create that foundation so that uh, graduates are able to compete with whatever the changing dynamics of the job market are five years, 10 years, 15 years from now. And an extraordinary uh, number of fields and uh, professions. So from the investments in science and health and medicine, culinary arts, visual and performing arts, the cafeteria, which I've eaten at and it's fantastic, um, the media center and gymnasium. It a, represents a, a across the board investment in um, education for our future. And for that, uh, for that alone, this project deserves extraordinary recognition and, uh, and celebration. I also think that there's a, a, almost a bigger piece to this, which is the recognition from our government as a, to what the model of vocational education can do for our communities. This investment is, as I said, an extraordinary investment. But when I was here a couple of months ago, um, getting a, a guided tour from the students and checking in on uh, a number of the projects that uh, were going on and seeing the excitement on their faces, uh, what struck me in a story that I tell actually over and over again was when I was getting guided around by a, a young woman, extremely impressive young woman, who was going to graduate from um, Southeastern Regional Vo uh, Technical Vogue with a um, degree in cosmetology. She was going to be a hairstylist. And already had a job lined up, uh, had her certificate, so it was board certified, and was going right into the workforce with a, a skill set that was going to get her a $12 an hour job. And she was very excited about it, and she was talking to me a little bit about it, and I asked her if she had any plans to pursue other uh, additional higher education. And she said yes, she does, but she couldn't afford to do that immediately. What she was in fact doing, and what this education enabled her to do, was essentially purchase her way to a bigger and brighter and better future, to earn her way there from families that didn't necessarily have the resources to match the extraordinary burden that we were putting on students today. This school, this industry, is creating a pathway to economic mobility and economic opportunity to make sure that that type of future exists for kids across the income spectrum and across our state. And so to those of you that have put together are responsible for this type of investment, that are responsible for this curriculum, that are responsible for our kids, thank you for being that example that I can then go out and brag about to all of the other representatives across the entire country, and I do. And I just want to say, um, 
from the bottom of my heart, thank you for that commitment, thank you for um, that achievement, and thank you for setting the example for the rest of us to follow. I appreciate that very much. Good morning. My name is John Hallenberg, and I'm a senior in performing arts. Our next guest, Mr. Steve Grossman, is the treasurer and receiver general of the state of Massachusetts. He has spent most of the past 35 years as the chief executive officer of the Grossman Marketing Group, a 100-year-old, fourth-generation family business. In the private sector, he has created jobs, managed money, dealt with crises, and found common sense solutions to problems in that business. He also grew the revenue of the company eightfold by successfully entering new markets and positioning the company to meet <coughs> challenges of a changing economy. Treasurer Grossman knows what it's like to meet a payroll and keep a business going in tough times, and he brings that experience and his commitment to public office. In addition to his business experience, he is also involved with many charitable organizations, serving as a trustee for Project Bread, as an advisory board member for the Women's Lunch Place, and as chairman of the advisory board of Cambridge College. He was also a founding member of the Board of Massachusetts Institute for a New Commonwealth a former campaign chair for combined Jewish philanthropies, and a founding board mem member of the Lenny Zankum Fund. Treasurer Grossman is a graduate of Princeton University and Harvard Business School, and brings his education, his experience, his energy, and his commitment to his current position serving the state of Massachusetts. Please welcome Mr. Steve Grossman. So the fact of the matter is John would much rather be welcoming and introducing my wife Barbara because my wife Barbara, in addition to being a theater historian and a director, she's directing the production of Rent right now, uh, Barbara's vice chair of the Mass Cultural Council. So at some point, given the fact that you have this interest and this deep commitment to the performing arts, um, I'd like you to meet my wife Barbara. My wife Barbara is fond of saying that while we focus overwhelmingly these days in public education on STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and math. And we know that's critical if you want to be a winner in this increasingly innovative economy of ours that requires those skills. Perhaps the acronym that we may want to consider even more important to all of us in terms of educating the whole child is the acronym STEAM, science, technology, engineering, the arts, and math. And I hope when you take your tours, you look at the Black Box Theater, you look at the music room, and the significantly enhanced facilities here that will make it possible for John and for generations of Johns who will come after him to be able not only to be able to perform, but to be able to have the kind of education that will make you truly the citizen that you will ultimately be. You do us all proud by what you do every single day, and I'm very grateful for your introduction. So thank you, John. <laughs> Let me also recognize the fact that as we think about 21st century education, there are really three key ingredients. Yes, we need great technology, and we've heard about that in the video, and you'll see it firsthand, the Wi-Fi environment. Every investment that we've made here is about making sure that the technology is 21st century and is relevant to the needs of the students and those who will enter the workplace at some point after school, after community college, after college, whenever they choose to enter. And yes, we need great facilities, but the most important ingredient in successful kids and in great education are the educators and the staff who surround them. So at this point, I'd like to recognize and ask to stand every member of the staff, teachers and staff alike, here at this wonderful school. If you're standing and you're a member of the staff, just raise your hand, but we want to honor you because you're the backbone of what makes this school so successful. Please stand and be recognized. I also want to note that um, it's a particular pleasure for me to be sitting next to Joe Kennedy and to be speaking on the same program as Joe Kennedy. Uh, my grandfather, who was an immigrant who came to this country in 1900, his first campaign in which he was involved, he wasn't running, he was helping a candidate, and that candidate happened to have been Joe Kennedy's great-great-grandfather, 
John F. Honey Fitzgerald, who in 1910 was running for re-election of mayor of Boston. My grandfather was involved in that campaign. He knew after that campaign that he was going to devote the rest of his life to grassroots organizing. And this is not a political statement, Democratic or Republican. It's simply a statement about the importance of civic engagement and civic involvement. And I just want to note, I know that Father Denning uh, was only here to deliver the uh, invocation. But I've been on the campus of Stonehill many times. I've had the privilege of speaking there. I've had the privilege of debating there. I don't know another college in this Commonwealth that is more dedicated to public service and to civic engagement than is Stonehill College. And I think we can celebrate this moment of ours, this moment of rededication to education here on this great day of the ribbon cutting, than to make sure that we understand the civic involvement, civic engagement, is the core of what our democracy is all about. So, Father Denning, thank you for your leadership every single day of your life. You're grateful. And I also want to introduce two members of my colleagues, two colleagues of mine at the Mass School Building Authority. First, I'd like to introduce Jack McCarthy, who is sitting just uh, two seats to uh, Joe Kennedy's left. Jack McCarthy has had a distinguished career in public service. He has been the executive director of the Mass School Building Authority for the last couple of years. The first executive director was a woman who's known to many of you in this room, Catherine Craven, who's now the executive director of the Mass, uh, the UMass uh, Building Authority. But Jack McCarthy does an extraordinary job leading a team. We spend annually a billion dollars in public construction of schools, new schools, renovated schools, additions, new roofs, new boilers, new windows. And it's important that you know that every dime that we spend is accounted for and is spent wisely. When the legislature created the Mass School Building Authority back in 2004, they created it in a belief that the pro process by which we built and renovated public schools was broken. It was irrevocably and irretrievably broken. We had a waiting list of over $10 billion of promises that we collectively had made to cities and towns and to districts like this all over the Commonwealth, and we weren't delivering the goods. We were failing the next generation of our children. And the legislature said, we're going to create an authority, and we're going to fund it with one penny of the sales tax. Every time you make a purchase of any product that's taxable, and one of those pennies goes into a fund, that accumulates every year to a little over $700 million. And that money is what made possible the 80% of the $33 million project that we're celebrating here today. So to those who were in the legislature in 2004, and many of your legislators were, but to all legislators, to all 200 members of the legislature, House and Senate, and to Jay and to Shauna, who are both here this morning. Thank you for your confidence in the MSBA. Thank you for confidence in the team at the MSBA. Jack McCarthy, by the way, spent nine years as the Deputy Inspector General of the Commonwealth. And the job of the Inspector General is to make sure that waste, fraud, and abuse, and wrongdoing is caught early on and is looked at carefully. So there's no better person than to watch over the billion dollars a year that we spend and that's $700 million of your money, your taxpayer dollars, than Jack McCarthy. So Jack, thank you for your leadership every single day. And I also want to uh, recognize an MSBA alumna. Holly McLean was a lawyer for a number of years at the MSBA. She'd probably still be there, but it was a long commute. But her, our loss at the MSBA is your gain and she is your Director of Human Resources, and I want to recognize not only Holly's leadership as a lawyer, she came to the MSBA in law school, and she learned a lot, and she said to me on the way in, she said, boy, the MSBA could not have prepared me more effectively for the work that I currently do. So Holly, it's a joy to see you, and thank you for your, for your time. There are some very special ingredients that went into this project, and I think they are role models for any other group of citizens who are putting together a new school. This takes eight, ten years. This is a long, long process. And the engagement of citizens, of teachers, of staff is critical. But one of the most important things that we did in order to make this school relevant to the needs of a 21st century economy 
was to do an extensive labor market analysis. What does that mean? It means we reached out to the business community in this area, in this area of these wonderful towns in the city of Brockton, and said, what are the needs of the 21st century business community going to be? What are you going to need? What are you going to need projecting forward? Not today, not just tomorrow, but 5 and 10 and 15 years from now. You know, the great hockey player Wayne Gretzky once said that you don't go where the puck is, you go where the puck is going. You will anticipate the future. A great leader of mine, a great teacher of mine once said that great leadership is when you anticipate the future and act on it. And that's exactly what you did here. You anticipated the future. You thought about what are these young people next year, the year after, and 10 years down the road, what are they going to be? And what kind of a business environment are they going to be involved in? And how do you project that forward? That's the kind of planning, that's the kind of strategic leadership you have here in your superintendent, in your principal, in the faculty, and in the school committee. That's the kind of collegial and collaborative work that we do in government when government is effective. And I am very proud of the work that was done here. And the net result is stunning. You don't need me to tell you about it, you're going to see it. You saw it in the video. You're going to see it today. But more than that, you're going to see it every day in what goes into each and every one of your students and what future students are going to be able to experience. You know, when I ask employers, what are you looking for in terms of the employees that you're hiring? Are you looking at what they learn in the classroom? They said, you know, what they learn in the classroom is important. We are looking for bold, innovative, imaginative, creative problem solvers. We're looking at young people who are team players, who understand that innovation, imagination, entrepreneurial thinking is what is going to define the workforce of the 21st century. And that's all here. And that's what we're celebrating here today. So let this be a moment of rededication to the values, to the principles, and to the priorities of the communities from which these students come, of a great team of faculty and staff who go to work every day to give these kids the best that they've got, and a group of citizens who had the foresight, the imagination, and a group of legislators who had the guts to say the process was broken, we fixed it, that's our responsibility. We are here as your servants and we do every day what we can to make sure that the students who go here, the graduates of this school, and those looking forward into the future are the ones who are the winners in this wonderful 21st century innovation economy that this school will serve so well. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you so much for listening. That was wonderful. I can personally attest that uh, you do count every penny, so. <laughs> which is a good thing. Um, so with that, uh, the, the moment everyone's waiting for, we're going to kind of do a little divide and conquer here. Um, I'm going to have um, uh, the building committee chair, Joe Dutcher, and uh, uh, school committee chair, Colleen Maloney, joint treasurer Grossman, Kennedy McCarthy, and Father Denning in the front here, grab some scissors. And uh, I'm going to have um, uh, two past school committee members, Mark Lindy and Mike Petrowski, are going to kind of gather at the end over there to do the uh, dedication plaque. And then I'm going to ask the, the remaining five school committee members to be part of the cake ribbon cutting ceremony. So if you can all kind of just uh, get to your locations and we'll start. Let's see, let's, let's start with the plaque, the dedication plaque over to my left, your right. And Mark and Mike, it's a wonderful plaque. It's going to be hung right near the entrance. I'm going to let the photographers get over there. And uh, on the count of three, uh, you can unveil the plaque. It has the name of every uh, school committee member that was part of the process and the building committee and also our wonderful partners in the MSBA. So go ahead, three, two, one. Okay, and uh, I was always taught that uh, you have your dessert first, so uh, I think before we cut the, the big ribbon, we're going to go over to, over to my right, and uh, we're going to have the school committee. Uh, this cake was, was, was um, made by our uh, new baking department, our baking chef and their students. It's five different cakes, five different flavors. After they do the initial cut, they're going to wheel it out. Uh, it's, it's actually underneath a couple of gurneys from our health wing. Uh, they're going to wheel it out, uh, and uh, over there in the commons area, uh, there'll be uh, plenty of pieces. Hopefully, there'll be enough for everyone. So, again, three, 
two, one. Go ahead. Okay, finally, as we cut the ribbon, I'll declare the official opening of our open house. Uh, thank you. Enjoy your day. There's plenty to see, plenty to do. Three, two, one. It's a great day. I mean, you just look at look at you know things like this, and uh, uh, nine communities came together to uh, do this project. You know, it, and they all supported it, and you know, put uh, three, four years, five years maybe, with looking at planning, and uh, and uh, and it all came together wonderful. And, and it's just an unbelievable facility, and uh, it's, it, no one would ever think that this is a 45-year-old building. Um, the kids are thrilled. The parents are. They love it. Um, some graduates have come back and they're a little jealous that uh, they didn't have this, this great stuff. The theme that I'm hearing overwhelming today is it was all worth it for this result. Visit, visit, walk around, spend a day here. We have a, we have a program called Hawk for a Day where you can shadow a couple of students, you know, and see some of the things you like to do. And uh, it's uh, speaking to one of the uh, city councilors in Brockton. He says this is a hidden gem. No one, no one realizes what's here. And, uh, and the best way to find out is to actually visit and walk around. And we we'll probably have two, three thousand people here today, which is wonderful. Come in, check us out, see what we have to offer. Give me a call, make an appointment. I'll give you a personal tour. We do have we do have a waiting list. We 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 expect about 700 applications this year. We'll accept about 350 to 375. And uh, um, so so it's a little competitive to get in. Um, but for those that are fortunate enough to get in, they they do very well and they, they graduate with a lot of options. Whether they want to go right into work, um, or whether they want to go to college, or even as Congressman Kennedy said, if they want to go to work so they can work their way through college. So, uh, so it gives them a lot of options. Um, just that I'm so proud to be the principal here, and uh, I've been here six years, I can't wait for the next six. Oh, I'm thrilled, it was great. The people were lined up to get in here. It was excellent.